Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17 Public Beta 2 and Beta 4 re-release came out this past week, and there's even more features that have been found in both of those versions since then. We'll also talk about the overall experience since I've been using it full time on my 14 Pro Max and iPad Pro, and we'll talk about your experience like we do every week based off the YouTube community poll, where there's over 9,700 votes at the time of this video and over 144 comments. I've read every single one of them, we'll talk about some of those comments a little bit later in the video. Now, as far as new features, let's jump right into those. And the first thing has to do with messages. If we go into messages and if you're searching for something in messages, such as the word iPhone, it finds it in messages and your links as well. And it's persistent. It stays put as you scroll. So you'll see it's translucent at the top and stays in place where before it would sort of go out of the screen and you wouldn't see it. If we go into standby, press and hold, and then maybe add a widget, we now have some new options for music and news. So you can have the latest music or news there. So if we tap on music, you can select between various widgets and top charts or listening activity. So if we want that, add widget, tap done, and then we can scroll through and see our different music widgets as well. So we can use this along with news and maybe Apple will add some more in the future. Within notes, if we select something within notes, highlight whatever you want, then tap on the option for your different formatting options. In the bottom right, we have a new icon. Compared to beta three here on the left, you'll see the icon has changed. When I tap on it, it adds a line. So it actually added it in real time as it's synced with beta three, but if I tap on it here, the icon is all different. So they've just changed it from an arrow to a little box. Within weather, if we scroll over to an area where it's currently raining, that weather actually persists into the different areas where there's new modules. So if we go into the module of hourly forecast and we look closer, you'll see the water is sort of dripping down through that. That's not new to beta four re-release, but it was added a little bit earlier on. I think with beta three, you'll see it's sort of dripping down into the air quality. And as we can continue down, it's not just the background anymore. If we go into our photos, and this is a photo I took when I was on the water earlier this week, taking a day off. If we go into a photo and then go in and maybe tap on this, go to edit, and then we go down to our markup tool within markup. If we tap on the plus button, then maybe we add a shape. So we'll add a shape here. If we add a square, a rounded rectangle rather, or square, double tap on that square, we can now enter text. This did not work in beta three at all. So now it's working. We can just add text within a little box and use it that way. Also, if we tap done and hit cancel, We'll discard the changes. And if we zoom in, you'll see the crop button in the upper right. If you press and hold on crop, you now have options for your different aspect ratios. So 916 square or original, and it will auto crop it to whatever you'd like. So that's something they've updated. And it's something that was there actually in earlier betas, but I didn't share in other videos as it's been found since. Within music, if we press and hold on a song and tap create station, there's a new little pop-up that shows up here when we create that station. So it took a moment and then popped up. If I do that again with the next song, again, create station, you'll see it will pop up there. So that's a new little screen pop-up that wasn't there before. Also, there's a couple new features that have been found that were in previous betas as well. If we go into maps and if we search for a city, we now have the option to download the offline maps, get directions or tap on guides. So it's a quick way to download that. If we want a map of the whole area, we can select that area and then tap download if we want to have that on our phone. So that's great. It's just a quicker way to do that. If we go into Safari, we now have those profiles that we had before. However, there's a new option for this. If we scroll down to Safari in our settings, within settings, if we go down to extensions, and then maybe we'll just go into the one password extension. In here, we can have the extension on individual profiles, such as personal, work, or home. If we turn that on, we have private browsing options as well. So we can have that individualized to a profile with specific extensions. So maybe you're using LastPass at work and you're using 1Password at home. You can have that customized to whatever profile you choose. This week, Apple released a bunch of different updates. We already knew that with iOS 17 public beta 2 for iOS, iPad. We got updates for watch and more. However, they released Safari 17, which is in beta, and it's now available for Mac OS Ventura and Mac OS Monterey. They offer the same features that we get with Mac OS Sonoma this fall. You don't see it on the public facing website that shows what's new, but it is available to developers. So if you want to test out those features, but you don't want to update to Sonoma, that's available if you're a developer. 
Now, also Apple unsigned iOS 16.5.1 this past week. So you no longer can downgrade to that version. You also can't downgrade to 15.7.7. Apple unsigned that. So now we currently have iOS 16.6 only, and then also iOS 15.7.8 only. Also, one thing we haven't seen before for quite some time is Apple unsigned iOS 17 beta one. We still have beta two, three, four, and four re-release signed, but not beta one. So that's something that's no longer signed. So if you wanted to downgrade to that version and test it out, you can't do that any longer. Now, as far as iOS 16.6, since it's been out about a week and a half or so, people have been talking about the overall experience actually a couple weeks at this point, and most say it's pretty good. I have it on my 14 Pro that I've been using here on the side. I use it for different things and different videos, and it's been pretty stable overall. Decent battery life. Most people say it's a good experience, and we'll read a few of your comments or a couple of your comments later in the video just to see how it's going. But it seems to be a good update finally after many sort of buggy updates with iOS 16. As far as iOS 17 beta 4 re-release and public beta 2 and the overall experience, well, there's definitely some bugs that still exist. However, first I wanted to mention the camera. The camera seems to be really hit or miss depending on who you ask. In fact, I posted on X today and it said, what's everybody up to? And someone responded. He said, I'm noticing a difference in the color science of my iPhone's camera since updating to iOS 17 public beta 2 on Monday night. I took the picture on the right with a black outfit on Monday afternoon while still running public beta one. And I added no filter or edit of any sort then. So on the right was beta one on the left was beta two. This is the same chair, just different clothes. And he also said, took the one on the left, just barely an hour ago with the same lighting condition, same spot, same position, same everything. And it turns out dramatically different. The picture on the left, the black outfit, by the way, captured my skin tone perfectly. So that's something that is very different between both of them with the same camera on the same phone with different betas. So Apple does seem to be updating this quite a bit. Thanks for sending that in. I really appreciate it. And that's something I really hope they fix with further betas and let us know that they've fixed it. Don't just fix it and not tell us. So I think that would be great to hear from them. As far as things that have been fixed, well, the keyboard bug is mostly fixed, but people are still having issues with it from time to time, whether that's going into spotlight or just typing in messages. However, I've had some issues with that. I'll talk about in a moment and general overall usability and stability seems to be quite good connectivity is quite good for me i've had no drops whatsoever it's been good on phone calls for me and if we disconnect from wi-fi we'll give it a second we're on t-mobile currently and it seems to be pretty good overall. I've had no issues whatsoever. It's connecting better than it ever has for quite some time for me. I don't know if that's everyone's experience, but it's been good on calls and everything else. As far as bugs that are remaining, well, that notification bug, of course, I mentioned that in the what's new video, there's still some issues there. So it sort of just jumps in from time to time. There's also a rotation bug that shows up every once in a while. So sometimes I'll be in an app, whether that's on a website, I'll rotate, rotate back and it doesn't rotate or it sticks in that position. Also on the iPad, I've had messages crash multiple times and show overlapping text. So basically you'd have the text entry box in messages on the iPad sort of overlay some of the text so you can't see it. And then I'd try and scroll down, I'd type and it would crash. So I've seen that over and over and I've heard of other issues on the iPhone, but I'm having more on the iPad this time around. Also, there seems to be an issue with the keyboard. So if you're using a magic keyboard and it attaches, sometimes it just doesn't work properly. So right now it's working, but other times it will just not work after it wakes up and I'll have to disconnect it like this, then reconnect it and then it will work again properly. So I'm seeing that over and over. That was a bug earlier on. It still persists today. Also, quite a few people have complained about the phone occasionally stuttering when you swipe out of an app or close an app, you go into one, then back out. Sometimes it will just be really slow and the frame rate will drop. Others have said that they have freezing. That seems to be less people, but still an issue. One other thing I wanted to mention that I had a really odd issue that I posted on X or Twitter or whatever we're calling it is my mail app completely disappeared. It went away. I couldn't access it through the dock here, but I was able to access it through spotlight search. However, it didn't come back until I did a full reboot of the phone. Then it returned and I haven't had the issue since. Also though, within the mail app, sometimes my new mail doesn't show up. It'll tell me I have four new email and then I go in and they're just not there. Then I'll have to close out of the app, go back in and then they'll show up. So there's definitely some odd issues. And if you're having issues that are not 
actually shown in the notes for feedback. I've gone over those before. Make sure you submit that new feedback. So go through the notes here in your inbox and see if there's any known issues. If there isn't, make sure to submit that feedback so Apple can take a look at it. They may or may not respond. If they don't, that doesn't really mean they haven't seen it. It just means that they're still working on issues. But if they need more information, they'll reach out to you. So it's a great way to let them know there's an issue or you have an idea or anything else. As far as performance, well, I already mentioned the stuttering and freezing for some, but when it's not doing that, it performs quite well. So occasionally where it will stutter, it seems to work fine other than that. So ProMotion is nice and fast, and then all of a sudden you'll close an app and it just won't be. But otherwise, doing different apps, tasks, using it for CarPlay seems to work okay for me. I've really had no issues. I'm using it on wireless CarPlay in an Audi, so really no issues there. I haven't had an issue whatsoever. As far as the overall heat, well, right now it's nice and cool. We'll run benchmarks in just a second, but let's take a look through the thermal camera. Using the thermal camera in the hottest point, I could find about 89 degrees at the hottest, although right now it seems to be around 87 degrees or around 32 degrees Celsius. So the phone in ambient temperatures of about 70 to 75 degrees seems to stay nice and cool overall, but some people do have complaints that it seems to be getting warm. Now, as far as overall battery life, let's go ahead and take a look at that. We'll go into settings then go to battery, battery health and charging, and we're at 90%. This is what we were at last week, and I'm at 259 cycles. However, coconut battery says I'm at 92% capacity. So based off of coconut battery, it seems I'm a little bit better, but either way, I've talked about how it's dropped pretty quickly this year. So it's not as great as it used to be. As far as battery life over the last 10 days, yesterday I had four hours and 58 minutes of screen active time three hours and 28 minutes of screen idle time and used over a hundred percent of the battery. I had to charge it again. Quite a few people report battery isn't that great this time around. Again, the day before four hours and nine minutes. So I'm not even getting five hours out of my battery life in a hundred percent charge. That's pretty poor. Today, I just shut off the always on display to see if it made any big difference so far. And so far we're at two hours and 44 minutes of screen active time. And I've only used about 40% of my battery life. So maybe that will help significantly. We'll have to wait and see. If you're wondering if you should install iOS 17 beta 4 re-release or public beta 2, I'd probably hold off at this point. I'd probably wait if you're waiting for stability, wait for public beta 3, usually around public beta 3 or 4, it's become very stable and is much better. However, if you need it for your business and you want to make sure everything works, well then I would wait until the public release, typically in September. As far as future releases, iOS 17 beta 5, I would expect this week. Last year we had it on the 8th. I would expect the same thing. So sometime around the 8th or 9th, possibly the public beta is usually a day after or so. So hopefully we see Apple do that this time around and not wait till the following week. Also, we may see a new version of iOS 16 with iOS 16.6.1 if they need to fix any issues. We've heard about some issues with screen time, and we could see that hopefully maybe this week or next if Apple has the time to get that done and released. However, they may just wait until iOS 16.7, which is usually in September. Normally, the last version will just have a release candidate and then a public release. But I'm looking forward to iOS 17 beta 5, of course, where we should have some new features. Now let's take a look at the overall benchmarks just to see if they've improved since the phone is cooled down and had days to process. So we'll go ahead and run those and see what we get. Benchmarks completed and even after running Geekbench it actually ramps up the processor to do that it's still fairly cool to the touch. But on the right we have beta 4 re-release on the left we have beta 4. And so it's significantly higher this time around as far as multi-core scores go. So single core, we have 2,628 compared to 2,616. Then multi-core, 6,373 compared to 5,960. So it's better, but it's not as great as far as overall smoothness as it sort of stutters around from time to time and occasionally lags. But I think it'll get better. I'm seeing a lot more refinement and I think Apple's doing a good job overall with iOS 17. We have mixed, mixed results depending on who you ask, but in general, it's pretty good. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what you had to say on some of the comments. The first couple of comments, we'll take a look at iOS 16.6. And this one says currently using iOS 16.6 on my iPhone 10. So far, it's been running great. Performance is good. Battery life is perfect. Best iOS 16 version so far. 
Chris Palmer 4983 said running iOS 16.6 on my iPhone 14 pro. I'm not certain the beta software for iOS 17 is ready for my daily drivers. So I'm content to follow the reviews for how the implementation is progressing. iOS 16.6 is smooth and snappy and great battery life with moderate to heavy use over the course of a long workday with usually 65 to 75% of my battery re remaining at bedtime. I have not noticed any bugs to date. I Lil Rob says, not sure if anyone else is experiencing this with iOS 17 beta four. My phone is freezing when I multitask watching a YouTube video and switching in between apps had to reset my phone two or three times due to it freezing using iOS 17 beta four re-release on my iPhone 14 pro max. I don't have many bugs, but I have an almost constant lag in home screen when using a wallpaper other than ones in collections. Also, I had a bug with spotlight search keyboard, not showing also sometimes my Wi-Fi does not automatically connect to my home network after disconnecting from 5g battery is pretty good. I also observed that my battery usage history disappeared after using wired CarPlay. Strange bug. Also, I had just now notifications in lock screen looking squared instead of rounded. The beta 4 is getting worse and worse by the day. Noah Messer 5023 said, I'm using iOS 17 beta 4 re-release on my iPhone 13 Pro Max and it's been good. The only issue I'm having is there's some stuttering in some areas in the operating system. Opening and closing applications, swiping between the home screen pages, accessing the today view, and swiping swiping down to accessing notification center. Scrolling in apps is stuttering as well at times. The famous notification bug is still there. Other than that, it's been good. So that's everything with iOS 17 beta four re-release and iOS 17 public beta two. Hopefully we get iOS 17 beta five on Tuesday with iOS 17 public beta three the same day, or hopefully the next. Maybe we'll get more refinement than we have already, get rid of that stuttering and get improved battery life. But I think it's pretty good so far, especially for earlier betas. Let me know your experience and if you found anything else as far as features or bugs in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.